Hello, good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl Faith. Here at Escape Forever Free, we are teaming together to restore physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. If it is your first time joining, a special welcome to you. We invite that you click the bell icon, subscribe, and stay with us. We have a lot of support going on here. If you are a returning team member, we want to say an extra, extra special welcome back. We are doing um, the one hour kickstart devotional guide here in this video and it is aimed at helping us to build a healthy habit of spending at least one hour with God every single day. So you start with this video, haven't chosen your best sacrificial time of that day and then at the end of this video you continue with you and God alone for one hour. For this season of our kickstart devotional guide, we are using the book the Great Controversy and we are following the 1888 version. We also use alongside the King James Version of the Bible in our reading and studies. So welcome again, grab your tools and let's get straight into it. We are going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another time that you have allowed us to be in the land of the living. We thank you, Father, that we are able also to draw near to you so that you also will draw near to us. Father, please do not forsake us and please do not take um, hide truth and light from us. Give us all truth and light that each of us need individually for our salvation and also to complement our mission of spreading the everlasting gospel to the rest of the world, saving sinners from doom and eternal death. As you go through this morning's um, kickstart devotional, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us, guide us, inspire us, and Father, that your Holy Spirit will remain upon all of us who are willing to receive it throughout the rest of this day. Give us our daily bread, we beg, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. So we are in chapter 10 of the Great Controversy. Right before we get into chapter 10, we are going to do our memory text because as we know by now, and for newcomers, every week we commit a text to memory and we try to recite it on Friday. This week's memory text comes to us from Proverbs. Proverbs 22 and verse seven. And it reads, the rich ruler, sorry, the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender again proverbs 22 verse 7 the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender all right so may god help us to recall this in due season to bring glory to his name and to edify souls even our very own we're going to go straight now into continuing in the great controversy we are at chapter 10 which is entitled progress of reform in germany and it looks at at this point we are looking at luther having come out of exile without any safe conduct has approached the papacy to defend the truth which the papacy had launched a direct attack on using the truth itself <laughs> to by way of um distortion to confuse the people and to make the truth spurious will appear spurious to the people who know who had become great adherents after luther's um tireless effort in in dividing the truth to them now were under confusion as the papacy launched false prophets to make the truth appear spurious and has caused widespread confusion and double-mindedness among um, um original believers and acceptors of the truth which luther had divided for um the people so now luther is out and contesting the um this cruel attack upon the gospel and we will proceed to see how that is going all right so we'll pick up where we left off we're going to pick up at ch chapter 190.2 and continue so it reads day after day for a whole week luther continued to preach to eager crowds so he had come back and the people were again had flocked him and he was again 
um, reiterating the word for them, making clear some of the spurious that had come out of the, the, per, the, um, the direct attack of the false prophets that were organized out of Rome at the time during his exile. So let's continue to read. So it says, day after day, for a whole week, Luther continued to preach to eager crowds. The word of God broke the spell of fanatical excitement. The power of the gospel brought back the misguided people in the way of truth. Luther had no desire to encounter the fanatics whose course had been productive of so, of so great evil. He knew them to be men of unsound judgment and undisciplined and undisciplined passions who, while claiming to be especially illuminated from heaven, would not endure the slightest contradiction or even the kindest reproof of our counsel, arrogating to themselves supreme authority. They required everyone without a question to acknowledge their claims but as they demanded an interview with him he consented to meet them and so successfully did he expose their pretensions that the impostors at once departed from Wittenberg the fanaticism was checked for a time but several years later it broke out with greater violence and more terrible results said luther concerning the leaders in this movement quote to them the holy scriptures were but a dead letter and they all began to cry the spirit the spirit but most assuredly i will i will not follow where their spirit leads them may god in his mercy preserve me from a church in which there are none but such saints there are none but such saints i wish to be in fellowship with the humble the feeble the sick who know and feel their sins and who sigh and cry continually to God from the bottom of their hearts to obtain his consolation and support. End of quote. Now Thomas Munzo, the most active of the fanatics, was a man of considerable ability, which rightly directed would have enabled him to do good, but he he but he had not learned the first principles of true religion he imagined himself ordained of god to reform the world forgetting like many other enthusiasts that the reform should begin with himself he was ambitious to obtain position and influence and was unwilling to be second even to luther he declared that the reformers in submitting the authority of the scripture for that of the pope were only establishing a different form of popery he himself he claimed had been divinely commissioned to introduce the true reform he who hath the spirit quote unquote said monza quote hath true faith although he should never once in all his life see the holy scriptures the fanatical teachers gave themselves up to be governed by impressions regarding every thought and impulse of the voice of god consequently they went to great extremes some even burned their bibles exclaiming quote the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life end of quote monza's teaching appealed to men's desire for the marvelous while it gratified their pride by virtually placing 
human ideas and opinions about the word of God. His doctrines were received by thousands, however. He soon denounced all order in public worship and declared that to obey princes was to attempt to serve both God and Belial. <laughs> what an apostasy here to comment. What an apostasy. Well, when the, when the pangs of hell are letting loose, it's like they they do it in a floodgate, you know? And, and that was what was happening here in the middle of this experience in Germany. All right, so we're going to stop here for now. And we'll come back in our next video where we will explore further how it is that Luther is able to defend this attack upon the truth. The truth as written in the, the words of God. All right, so we're going to go to our meditation on him right now. It is number 595. Let every lamp be burning. All right, so we're going to do stanza two. Though thousands calmly slumber on the last great message spurning, we'll rest our living faith upon this his promise of returning. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fare. The master's grow, the master's come in draw near. Let every lamp be burning. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another occasion with you, Father. Dividing truth and light as your Holy Spirit um, led your people. We are now able to, Father, benefit from the same. We pray, Father, that all of us here who are willing to understand all that is shared with us here and to understand the workings, the nature, and the prophetic writings as it concerns the papacy, may none of us, Father, be lacking this understanding because, indeed, it also represents the oil that we need to have in our lamp, the correct oil of truth and light, undiluted and rightly divided, is what we need to all have in our lamps to keep it trimmed and burning right now father may all of us here receive such a blessing and may none of us be missing from your kingdom when you come seal up your truth within us and all that we would have received of truth today father help us to understand it fully and give us the spirit of jesus christ to follow after it obediently let your will be done in our lives and we surrender all to you now in jesus christ's name amen let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be known always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Please follow the blueprints, the Holy Bible, without wavering. Hereby we will be able to walk good and walk with God. See you in our next video. Do continue for one hour, you and God alone. God bless you. Much love.